The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time on a Friday, coming into a long weekend on uh, markets, picking things off in positive territory. We have some, you could call tame inflation numbers this morning, core PCE coming in with a four handle. We'll get into that in a moment. The market liking the economic data to kick things off for Friday trading. You have the S&Ps right now up by 31 points. And most of that gain coming from where we were at about 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m. You see the volatility on the inflationary CPE data this morning. We got a couple different data points at 8.30. You trade from 4,060. We're up 25 points from there. So markets were barely in the green coming into that number. We're pretty decently positive, and that's after quite a day yesterday to the upside, man. NASDAQ 100, you're up 1.2% right now. You just gained about 100 points plus on that inflationary data. The Dow up 115 right now, 32,715. You got the Russell catching a bid up 13 points. That's three quarters percent in the Russell. Bitcoin, not so much the case, man. Be careful of Bitcoin. There may be a decoupling going on right now with crypto, Bitcoin, altcoins, uh, the whole crypto sector struggling. You got Bitcoin under 30,000, and that's with the markets rebounding with the S&Ps approaching 4,100. Crude, crude ain't stopping, man. 114.99 this morning. You sell off a bit. We're back to about that 114 price point. That was trading at 113. Volatility everywhere, but crude to the upside, 114 a handle. Gold contract up about $10. There's some volatility for you on the inflation data this morning. Gold spikes to about 1855. We're back to 1863. You're positive $10 on gold. You're basically flat from where you were on that gold contract from most of the early morning hours. And we jump to notes and bonds. Right now, you're talking about a 10 year, pretty tame action, especially with the market moving so much. We got the 10 year yield 2.73%. 2.73%. Not that bad on the 10-year, considering where we've been. You trade all the way down to a price point of 117.08. We're a solid three-plus points above that price level right now, 120.11 on the 10-year. you got a 10-year yield, as I said, below 2.75% right now. And we jump over to the VIX. As we've been dealing with a very sustained level in the VIX, we're sitting still at 26.86. Still elevated from that spike that we started on April 21st. But it's been quite a pullback in the VIX as we've seen the market rebound nicely. We'll see where the day brings us. All right, let's jump right into the numbers. And as CNBC puts it, and uh, I would agree, it is the preferred gauge. Core CPE, that's one that the Fed is definitely looking at, folks. 4.9% in April. Four handle. Four handle seems like nothing, man. We're talking about 7, 8, 9% inflation. Again, this is the core number. Okay, the headline number I think came in at 6.3%. Yes, there it is. So let's get into the exacts. Core personal consumption expenditure price index. Came in at 5.2% in March. You're down to 4.9% in April. A lot of this data lining up with at least for this data point, okay? Now, every month is going to be important, folks, all right? When we get non-farm payrolls. I mean, we're coming back, and we have one day left in May, folks, and then it's June. We come back on Tuesday, May 31st. Wednesday, June 1st, kicks off a new month. We'll get non-farm data probably what? Maybe June 10th we get that two weeks from then. That'd be interesting. It's my dad's time in the trade webinar. Maybe that is when we get non-farm payrolls. It's either the 3rd or the 10th, I imagine. Nonetheless, those data points are coming. They're coming quick. We're going to get them next month. But for this month, this data, just looking at this data, if you are data dependent, this would indicate that potentially March was the peak of inflation. That's what people have been talking about. That's been the hopes. We'll see if it plays out um, pretty much in line with expectations. Core number, 4.9%. 0.3% on a monthly basis. Same as March and in line with estimates. Uh, on the headline number, you were at 6.6% a month ago. You're at 6.3 now. You were at 5.2% on the core a month ago. You're at 4.9 now. Um, yeah, so pretty good numbers in terms of, yeah, you could always see a bigger drop. 
But I imagine if the market starts figuring out that, yes, we've at least peaked and we're going to have a rocky slide back to normalcy. But if the slide has at least begun, that would be encouraging because inflation, man, it is raging and uh, pretty remarkable that you can get a core number at 4.9 for the PCE. You can get a headline number at what? 6.2? What did I just say the headline number is? Let me get it right. 6.3? Yeah. And somehow that is a good data point for inflation because we have just been out of control, man. So the market takes it. It runs with it. Remarkable that you don't get a lot of move in notes and bonds on that number, right? Notes and bonds are baked in, folks. All right. Barely any movement considering the volatility we've had recently. If this really is going to drive different action in the Fed, right, maybe this, this indicates that the Fed with their 50 basis points, getting inflation under control with comps that are a little bit tougher as we come into the later part of this year. Not much movement on the 10-year right now, as maybe the movement has already taken place on the 10-year, right? That move, folks, from March 7th of a 129 handle down 12 points over the period of two months, just remarkable, uh, that acceleration, and we get a little bit of a bounce. Now, on a Fibonacci basis, to see the type of bounce we're talking about here. You're barely at the 236. I imagine this thing's going to get at least up to about 121, 26, folks. That's a 382 of the move eventually. That would bring yields down even a little bit more. Okay, and maybe that's what the impetus is that gives the market a little bit of a boost from here. That would also bring it right back to the trend line that this thing had been in. Check out, that was a solid trend line, man, going from August of 2021 until this thing really broke out of it in March of 2022 this year. So you're talking about seven months that we were already in a trend of lower prices, higher yield. Here's your year end, year beginning. Okay, that's when markets really fell out of bed. But the yields were already showing you that we were to higher yields. Lower price, higher yield. We break out of there. Maybe you get it back up to the 382. That's probably going to bring you back up to that trend line as well. At the same time, we'll see where we go from there. Let's check around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading this morning on some light inflationary data. We got Amazon. I mean, these moves are just mammoth, man. How about Amazon adding $225 per share just since Tuesday morning? Amazon this morning, you're going to open up about $25. That's about 1% to the upside. We jump over to big dog Apple catching a bid. Apple up a buck fifty. That's a solid twenty-four dollars in market cap added overnight. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft trading up by a couple bucks to two sixty-eight this morning. We jump over to Google. Catching a bit to 2200 about from 2165 for Google shares. We'll jump over to Tesla. Got to keep our eye on Tesla, right? Man, you talk about a pop. Tesla, 617, the low on Wednesday. Really catches an acceleration yesterday. Back above 700. We're trading at 725 this morning. We jump over to Twitter. Catches a bid on Wednesday. As Musk says, he's up in the ante for the equity. He's putting in the deal. The deal seems like it may have life again. We're still sitting under $40 for the price of Twitter. 39.67. Barely positive right now with the market. Pretty positive. Uh, to say the least, up 29 points right now. NASDAQ up 131, Dow up about 113 right now. And yeah, Bitcoin's been struggling, man. At one point in this show, folks, I'm going to, I got to pull it up. I'll do it during one of the breaks. Maybe I'll try and get it done during this break. The correlation, Bitcoin had been trading like the NASDAQ 100. I don't think that's the case, folks, because NASDAQ 100 got quite a bounce going and Bitcoin got nothing going. So you may see a decoupling here. Um, yeah, because just look at the NASDAQ 100. That recent bounce the last couple of days, nothing going on on Bitcoin. Be careful, folks. We're under 30,000. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. This the gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the NASDAQ 100 up more than a percent right now. You're trading up 131 points. So you jump over to Bitcoin real quick. And, you know, the correlation, not quite as what I was thinking it was. Um, and there's you know, different time frames you can put this in. I'm on the Thinkorswim platform right now. If you are on a Thinkorswim platform, folks, the way that you add this, compare it to anything, which is kind of cool, is you just go into studies, okay? You go into quick study. I'm sure there's other areas you can add it in and compare it with. Now, you can add whatever you want, but just comparing it to the NDX, the NASDAQ 100. Uh, you know what? Maybe if we compare it to the Qs, it might give a better chart. Let me see. First, I'm going to remove that study real quick. I'm going to add the study and a quick study, compare it with symbol, put the cues up there. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, this is just going back, what, 20 days? 20 days, all right? Highly correlated. Not many people realize the extreme correlation on many occasions. If you're trading Bitcoin, you're trading the NASDAQ 100, folks. You're trading the cues. Here's the difference, though. You have volatility to the downside. You get the purple is the Qs. The bar chart behind is the underlying Bitcoin that is on the chart. All right. We've seen the Qs accelerate to the upside. We haven't seen the same thing. Now, that is just going back 20 days. Let's see how we do when we go back 180 days. Things really got out of whack here when you had the NASDAQ 100 pulling back with extreme volatility to the downside. Bitcoin, not so much the case. Yeah, and at one point you had, is that right? Yeah, it's going to be. So December, Bitcoin was trading at 50,000. Yeah, you back things up to where Bitcoin was trading at the highs of 69,000 back in November of 2021. Um, but just keep your eye on that. And if I'm trading either of those, I would be keeping track of it in a big way. Because if you see a decoupling, folks, where this NASDAQ 100 is, Bitcoin should not be under 30,000, in my opinion. Um, you know, with Luna going on, I would just be very careful. And that's even being a believer in many great things to come from the crypto universe. But boy, it may be a little bit of a reckoning right now with everything going on. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on. We talked about PCE. That's a big one, of course. Uh, let's see. What else do we have up here? Yeah, so talking about the, this is kind of what got me thinking about this. Bitcoin's 
Bitcoin's crypto dom dominance is strongest since bull market highs. That might not be a good thing for the crypto sector overall, folks. Bitcoin's 44% share of the market cap of the entire crypto industry is the highest since October. It's interesting when you take a look at this chart. Remarkable when you look at in January of 2021, folks. Okay, now you're backing things up before what? The whole Dogecoin craziness of 2020, Ryan, right? I'm sure that contributed to the altcoins. Um going bananas for lack of a better term but bitcoin represented 70 percent of the entire market cap of the crypto sector within the span of about four to five months what's the date five months bitcoin went from being 70 percent of the cryptocurrency sector to being only 40 percent of the sector and you've been chopping around at that level and since luna goes bust okay you have the altcoins paying attention but you still only pull back from 60 to 56 percent of the market cap you have a slight uptick in bitcoin on that level but be careful man you're talking about you know whether it's the stable coins whether it's all of that going on um you know 60 billion dollars wiped out in luna in a heartbeat and it's a little bit worrisome folks when you have bitcoin being such a large share of the crypto market because in theory crypto is supposed to have a function I think we can all agree that Bitcoin is not a store of value because it's so volatile. Many cryptocurrency, cryptocurrencies have a purpose, right? Like Ethereum, you have smart contracts, right? Bitcoin has none of that. All they have is that you can own some Bitcoin and they're only going to make 19 or 20 million Bitcoin, period. If that's what the whole market is, folks, that's not going to play out. So be careful of that one in a big way. All right, let's jump to electric vehicles. Tesla's trading higher today, but Ford, they're going to beat Tesla to the punch with the first electric F-150 delivery. Um, a rural Michigan resident who also had a Cybertruck on order ends up with the Lightning number one. I wonder what that'd be worth, man. I would try and save that one anytime you get the number one, right? Uh Number one on the Ford Motors' first electric pickup, the F-150 Lightning. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people coming for Tesla's lunch, folks. They sell 900,000 F-Series trucks in a good year, generating more than $40 billion in revenue. And uh, the Cybertruck... Debuted in November of 2019, folks. We're coming up on three years. Three years were coming up that that Cybertruck got delivered. Um, and he put down money for the Cybertruck. It was only 100 bucks at the time. Remember, the Model 3 was $1,000 if you wanted to get in line. The Cybertruck's only 100 bucks, So they're going to tout how many orders they have in there. But it's only $100. I imagine many people who put that down might not be purchasing it. Like this gentleman. Uh, probably not going to be purchasing it if he's already got his Ford F-150 Lightning. Uh, to boot, but we'll see man, you know Volkswagen. They're coming for that lunch pretty quickly They're gonna be pushing out more cars than Tesla uh, in the next few years So there's gonna be a headwind for Tesla in a big way All right, what else we got going on? Of course, we got a lot of fundamental news with the numbers we had this morning uh, Wages are in there as well. US, US wage growth looks to be peaking a heartening development for the Federal Reserve, if not for American workers, though. So after handing out hefty salary increases over the past year, companies are becoming more cautious with their cash over concern. Further big payouts will eat into profits. Um, yeah, as we're seeing on some of the earnings, right? Not so much of the dollar stores, though. We'll go over those in a moment. The economists are penciling in a moderation in annual earnings growth to 5.2% in May from April's 5.5%. In data out next week those figures are among the highest on record back to 2007 uh, like I said this data point that we just got folks core PCE it's a good number okay we are gonna get a lot of data points and just because we got one data point do not get complacent in this market we got quite a bounce going on right now I mean look where we are All right let's take off this study that we're dealing with right now and we're gonna back things up on a daily basis just on the S&P's now, going back longer term time frame, we've pulled this one up many times, okay? The 382 of the entire COVID move goes from 2174 to 4800. 3800 was about the price point. We literally come down and hit 3807 within four or five points of where I have it on this chart. Now, focusing on the shorter term time frame, though, okay? 
That doesn't quite get us there. I guess we'll put it back to a daily. We got to go back to the high that we had on March 29th of 4,600. You trade down to 3,800. I mean, if you're looking for a bounce of the 382, you're talking about about 4180. You got about 100 points to the upside. Maybe that's where we go. But keep in mind, folks, you get up to that 4180 point, I would really start being careful in this market, uh, as all that is is a 382 bounce from the previous high. And you talk about uh, volatility, folks. It is here, to say the least. You jump to the NASDAQ. All right. Now, both of these completed ABCD formations. Uh, I forget the caller last night, but a great call on my dad's show. And yeah, I mean, you got A to B, C to D completions across the board. The NASDAQ, you got a 382. We'll finish this up when we come back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're looking at a market opening S&Ps up about 26 points right now. That's about two-thirds percent in the green. You have a NASDAQ positive, opening up positive 1.1 percent. The Dow, just 45 points in the positive, barely in the green. And the Russell, up about eight points right now. Bitcoin, we're talking about Bitcoin, man. Watch out. You're negative eight-tenths percent for Bitcoin. You were flirting with the 28,000 handle. You were flirting with the 27,000 handle yesterday for a brief moment before you got a bid. You got Ethereum under 1,800. You're almost at a 1,600 handle in Ethereum shares. Gold contract up about 10 bucks right where you were before that economic numbers this morning. And you jump over to the note and bond market. As I said, pretty tame action, especially considering with the move we had in the indices. You got the 10-year, 120.13. You got the 30-year right now at 141.12. Both of those barely in the green. And you're talking about a yield right now in that 10-year 
of 2.725%. We'll call it 2.73%. Over in Europe right now, we have the DAX positive by about a percent, FTSE positive by about a quarter percent, Cacarole positive by a percent as well, and uh, overnight in Asia, positive as well, with the Nikkei up about two-thirds percent, Shanghai up about two-tenths percent, Hang Seng up 2.8 percent over in Asia. Yeah, some of those stocks. How about Alibaba yesterday, man? From 82 to 95, today you're giving back about 2.2 percent. You had JD rocking higher yesterday. From about 50.50 to 53.50, um, pretty tame action. But all things considered, I mean, take a look at Baba, right? We'll put this thing on a daily just to keep it. I've had this thing on a while, man. Be careful on these stocks, folks, because every time we've touched the top trend line, and we are going back to a trend that Alibaba has been in since October of 2020. You're talking about more than a year and a half. This thing has been in a straight downward channel well-defined. I mean, look at how many times this thing has touched the top and the bottom. Even if you take this aberration out of the equation, you touch the top in February of 2021. You touch that area in June of 2021. You touch the bottom line a couple times as we're in October of 2021. Top, bottom, bottom, top. And we're coming right to the area that we have been in uh, in terms of the high point on this weekly bar would be about... You're talking about a trend line of 97. We're sitting at 92.48 right now. Put it back on a daily and zoom in on all that action. And you can see coming right to that level, maybe you're talking about 97. So be careful on these equities, man. We were just trading at 78 in Alibaba 15 days ago. And you're up 15 bucks from that price point at 92 bucks right now for Alibaba. All right, let's see how some of the FANG stocks are opening up. Amazon catching a bid. You talk about a pullback, man. Amazon up 2.7% right now. Microsoft up a percent. We jump over to Apple up 1.6%. It's going to be a risk on day, folks. Uh, I would be careful selling this market as we come into a long weekend. Things lining up well right now. You got yields pulling back a little bit. You have inflationary numbers, pretty decent. Fed's going to be data dependent. Jerome Powell probably going into the long weekend at least with a sigh of relief that the data, at least on their side for the time being uh can't argue with the fact that the numbers not as high as they were in march and we're going to be dealing with some lofty comps so that was probably the high point now it's all going to be how fast can the fed get the market to move that inflationary number back down as in how fast can the tools that they're using try and force that inflationary number to come back down without harming the economy as much as they can but are we going to be stuck at some of these numbers, right? I mean, you're only down to 4.9%. We still got a long ways to go. Um, but nonetheless, I imagine it's going to be a decent day in the markets right now as we come into the long weekend. Things looking a little bit rosier than where they were just last week. I mean, check it out, folks. Apple, a week ago, was trading at 132. We're trading at 146. I can't even do math that fast, folks. We're talking about, what is that, 14 bucks? Yeah, 14 bucks. That's not the math I do. 14 bucks times 16 billion shares, 16.5. And you're talking about Apple adding a quarter trillion dollars of its market cap in the last week. It's mind-blowing to think about, folks. Uh, but all of these equities were just dramatically lower last week. You're talking about Amazon, as I said, last Friday. 2100 we've added 160 bucks that's not even counting the sell-off you got on tuesday as retail continue to get smacked this week uh microsoft shares last friday 246 you train at 268 microsoft's up 10 percent from the lows that it had last friday they joke about in the den folks you gotta love a bear market rally and there's no way that the volatility is over right now okay but this is quite a rally you have all of these equities pulling back pretty substantially on a weekly basis. Yes, that's sticking out. But please keep things in mind of where we are. This is no reprieve from the greater trend in the market. And the greater trend in the market right now is negative prices. Okay. These are bear market rallies right now. And yeah, that S&P rally is quite a rally, folks. But we're only to where we were a couple weeks ago. And that's after selling off from 4,600 to 4,100. Okay. We're only not even to the lows that we had in February when you had the S&Ps trading from 4,800 to 4,100 in the span of about six or seven weeks. So it's important to keep the context of what's going on in this market in terms of where we've been, how far we've fallen, 
and the bounces are going to seem extreme until we potentially get further sell-offs. So keep it in mind. Uh, yeah, we got some moves going. NASDAQ 100 is rocking. We're up 1.5% right now. s and is inching towards 1% right now. Jumping around. I saw Canopy. Not sure of their numbers, but they're not good. Canopy just doesn't stop, folks. Down 12.2%. You talk about a nightmare scenario. From 56 bucks about a year and a quarter ago, you're sitting at 487 uh, I haven't even read the story on them. Just pulled up the chart. Looks like they missed numbers. Uh, fiscal year and fourth quarter revenue decline. Um, yeah, fourth quarter loss narrows. Revenue declines. It's just a never-ending story on this equity, folks. And there's your drop-off on their numbers. You're sitting at 487. You're back to the lows we had on Tuesday on Canopy. The one thing I'll say is if you want exposure to the industry, Constellation might be a play. Uh, because I wouldn't be buying Canopy. I mean, who knows? Maybe they go bankrupt at that price point. I mean, what are we talking about right now for Canopy? Let's see. You're talking about Canopy, a company. Yeah, they're not even going to have the fundamentals on the thinkorswim platform. Sometimes if the equity is just not uh, traded enough, they don't have it for every single equity out there. It's not an S&P company, of course. Um, but yeah, they're in trouble. And that is a one-way shot to negative prices, unfortunately, for that industry. The market, however, it's a one-way shot to positive prices so far this morning with uh, S&Ps inching towards 40 points in the positive right now at 4,095 and the NASDAQ 100 now up 200 points. Boy, you back things up just to where we were yesterday, folks. You were trading, zoom in on the action, with an 11,000 handle 24 hours ago. And just like that, we're up. 600 points yeah 600 points in the nasdaq 100 from where we opened yesterday let alone the recent lows that we had going back a week ago 11,491 how about a thousand points in the nasdaq 100 just like that remarkable all right let's take a look at the crew contract man we're coming up to 114 you take a look at crude on a daily basis right up to that 236 now what's interesting here is this is an area it's been a little bit of resistance for crude. 115 seems to be the recent high outside of that 130 price point we've had coming into the long weekend. People probably going to be doing some driving regardless of the prices. Uh, 114 right now. The one thing I will say, man, is if you're in the market for an SUV, I imagine that this is going to hit that market, folks. And I may be in the market for an SUV uh, in the near future. And I imagine how long is that going to take, though? for people really to get tired of these gas prices and saying, I did not buy an SUV to be getting 15 miles a gallon at five bucks a gallon. Didn't do it. I don't know why not, folks, okay? It's happened before. It wasn't like ages ago. So we'll see, but gas prices again, pretty hefty. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of big lots up here. Big lots with big losses to the downside today, down 14%. The pain continues in retail, man. We'll pull up another one, a couple others. We got gap trading lower in a big way. Uh, big lots. So they missed on forecast for quarterly earnings and revenue, larger than expected slump in comp store sales, and issued a cautious full year guidance. Inflationary pressures reduce discretionary spending like a super trifecta of things you don't want to hear going into earnings down 26% and keep, excuse me, down $16 to 20, down 16% to $26. That's big lots. Uh, and keep in mind though, that this thing has already been punished dramatically over the retail pullback. We were just trading at $38. Okay. You came into their earnings at what? $30. You were just trading at 38 a month ago, barely. Already punished and now punished even for Hibbit Sports, one of the biggest sports uh, retailers out there. Oh, they were. This is such an interesting market. I was going to say they were negative, but the market picking up uh, from where it's a positive territory, falling short of analyst profit and sales estimates, said that customers had less discretionary income than a year earlier quarter when stimulus payments helped boost spending. Nonetheless, they're catching a bid uh, this morning. So I was looking up Canopy. One of the things that Canopy did say, down 14%, is that a, so they reported a wider, wider than expected quarterly loss with revenue that also fell short of analyst estimates. Okay, the company said it expects to be profitable on an adjusted basis. Okay, now first of all, it's profitable on an adjusted basis, so that's not profitable but just profitable on an adjusted basis in fiscal 2024. Folks, that's telling a story, okay? If you're saying that you can forecast two years out right now with what's going on in this economy, how about just forecasting out a month out, two months out, what's going on, right? How about companies coming out 30 days after they announce and coming out and saying everything that we said is completely completely deteriorated to the point that we have to reanalyze and restate what we expect is going to be for earnings. That's what's happened, folks. Okay. So they're talking about that they're going to be adjusted profitable within a couple years. Be careful in that stock, folks. And I was a believer for a while in the industry. But you know what? I was saying to the Tigers down a moment ago, maybe it's harder to make money selling a plant than we thought. And it might be true, folks. You know, you can't make a bottle of Corona beer can't make Modelo. You can't make King Crawford wine. You can't grow wine. You can't grow grapes and you can make it, right? But you get the point. You can't grow it in your backyard. You can grow pot. <laughs> in Massachusetts, I forget what the exact legality is. I think it's either two or three plants per person you're allowed to have and grow, which should be the case anywhere it's legal recreationally, folks, okay? Um, because the bummer in Florida going on right now is it's legal medicinally, but all it is is a tax, and I've talked about it before. You got to go pay a doctor every nine months, I think it is, to get renewed on 
medicinal cannabis. So you got to go pay that doctor 200 bucks or 100 bucks to basically rubber stamp you. Okay. Uh, and then you have to renew your medical marijuana license or something like that. Um, so it's basically allowing people who have the financial wherewithal to become legal weed users. Not fair at all to people who can't afford it that then get locked up by the police and put in a box uh, at the taxpayer's cost for pot. So if it becomes recreationally legal, the only reason that you don't allow people to grow plants is just because you want to line the pockets of somebody. OK, so in Massachusetts, you can grow plants. I think it's two or three plants. If you have two adults in the house, though, it becomes either four or six plants. I think it's three plants per person. So if you have two adults in the house, you can have six plants. OK. I mean, I don't know how in the long run people are going to make money in Massachusetts if you can just grow plants. Now, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of business getting done in Massachusetts, okay? But in the long run, I imagine it's a lot more difficult maybe to make money in this industry than maybe we thought because competition is stiff. There's still an extreme amount of legislation set to go. And yeah, cannabis down 14%, man, and you're just back down to the lows of Tuesday. And as I said, be careful. You can go BK in that thing in a heartbeat. All right, let's jump to some other companies, some bigger companies with their earnings. How about Costco? It never stops, folks. They make, uh, is that? No, it's not an all time high, right? Yeah. Uh, but you're back to 468 from 612. You're positive on their earnings. So Costco comes out with their numbers. They beat on the top and bottom line for the most recent quarter, but the warehouse's retailer's profit margins shrank by nearly one percentage point due to increased costs for labor and freight. Labor and freight. So Costco says it's increasing prices for certain food items to offset those increases. Uh, you were a little lower pre-market. They're catching a bid with the market today. Now, that's probably not indicative of their earnings. They probably just basically met expectations. The market right now is up gangbusters. You got the S&Ps up about a quarter, one and a quarter percent. You got Costco up a percent with the market right now. Uh, I mentioned Gap. Yeah, be careful. Not quite the Macy's story. Look at that clawback, though. Gap down 6.3%. You were down double digits. You were down to 886, man. You were definitely down double digits. What did you close at yesterday? You closed at yesterday about 11. You were down to 9. So you were down almost 18% at one point. Yeah. And uh, they slashed their full year earnings forecast, wider than expected quarterly loss, and hit by cost for shipping and deeper levels of discounting. Somehow they catch a bid on the open. Alta Beauty. They're catching a bid up 11.2%, man. They beat the street forecast, latest quarterly report, upbeat outlook, helped by strong demand for beauty products. Well, I would imagine so, since that's what they sell. Uh, Alta up 11.3%. You take a look at this thing, man. You talk about some accelerations. That is a daily. And I'm not sure what's going on with Alta, man. But you just went from 330 to 421. You almost got back all the losses you had since april remarkable all right american eagle will continue on the retail sector uh they were lower by big numbers they've caught a bit on the open too but boy you want to talk about some problems folks you think that chart has any strength to it do i even need to put a channel line on that to see where this thing is going there's your 15 minute you catch quite a bit after selling off last night uh now quarterly profit and revenue fell short of estimates the quarter was a challenging one, so the CEO with demand well below the company's expectations. That is not what you want to hear, folks. Okay? Companies can fix problems that have to do with costs. You cannot fix when demand goes away. You know? Yes, it's a manager's job. It's an executive's job to spur demand for your products. Okay? But you cannot fix that like you can when you have a cost issue. Right? You didn't see... Um, the extreme nature of demand being ripped apart. Most of the time, it had to do with margins on a lot of these retailers and profits, right? Now, demand was a problem with certain sectors of discretionary spending. When you talk about Target, you talk about Walmart. 
Um, but American Eagle, man, I wouldn't be touching that one. That's a one-way trip to negative prices. Let's see how Macy's is trading today. Uh, following their strong earnings, up about 1.4% right now. s and is catching quite a bit. You're up 50 points right now. As I said, folks, the number to put on your chart, about 4180. That would be the 382 on this bounce right now. That would also bring you right back to the lows that we had of March. That's going to be an area of a headwind for this market. Maybe that's where we're heading today. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets basically sitting at session highs right now. You're looking at an S&P positive by 56 points. That's 1.4% in the green. NASDAQ 100, you're approaching 2% right now, 1.9% in the positive. Dow catches a bit on the open. You're up 7 tenths percent right now. And the Russell trading up 25 points as well. Just going to say a few words, folks. I want to talk about it all show, you know, but the school shooting this week, so sad. My heart's go out to all those families um, having a son that's now one years old. We have kids in the house of a five-year-old who was in school, pre-K, the day this is happening. Uh, we have a 15-year-old as well who's in high school. Uh, I said that day, folks, and I don't know the answer, but we got to all ask ourselves, what are we doing? And we got to do something, okay, because it's happening over and over and over, and we have to do something. And unfortunately, somehow this becomes political, and it becomes about guns, and it becomes about the Second Amendment. And I understand how important that is to people for responsible gun owners, okay, folks? But we got to do something, all right? And a lot of people forget 
that when I went to high school, folks, when I was in college, there was a federal assault weapons ban. Now, I'm not even sure that this would pass the Supreme Court we have right now. I'm not sure that's the solution. But we have an 18-year-old going out buying AR-15s, okay? And at least in 1994, our politicians were trying to do something, man. Okay, this followed a horrible 1989 shooting, I think, which kind of spurred on some of this. And, you know, the, the common defense is they're going to take your guns. The federal assault weapon ban took nobody's guns, folks. All they did was try to make it illegal going forward. Okay, so there's a lot of rhetoric. Everyone digs their heels in. But ask your politicians, what are we doing? Because they're going to talk about locked doors. Well, guess what? Sandy Hook had locked doors and the guy just shot his way through it. Okay. The story's coming out very sad. Um, took an hour for cops to get in there. Guy shows up with an AR-15 rifle who's 18 and buys it. we got to do something, folks. And a lot of people use that, you know, impulse thing to say you're going to take the guns. You can't do that, right? Well, they did it in 1994. I don't remember going to high school and going to college um, in a world that the Second Amendment didn't exist. It existed in that society, folks. We were all living in that society. So be vigilant, don't be afraid to speak out, and let's do something, folks, for the kids of America. All right, folks, thanks for starting your day with me. Have a great Friday, have a great long weekend. Basil's up next, thanks, folks.